Marissa. Ken. Do you know these seven most important questions you need to change your life? Well, if I didn't, it might be problematic that we're about to do this episode. So yeah, but but no, I can act like I don't. <laughs> Perfect. That's okay, exactly great. what I needed. No, you don't. Well, congratulations. No, Today, but I do need these. You do need these. I do need these. And the more you answer these questions and get clarity on these questions, the more you can start changing your life. Sweet. I'm ready to change this life. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do it. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's going to be an exciting episode. Awesome. Oh, and also, we are going to get a little deep dive on Marissa's vacation. Hey, yeah. I heard y'all had a little too much fun while I was gone. Focus on Marissa.com. Okay. <laughs> wow. We what will... is that going to like redirect to my dating profile? What do you want? Oh, if it's that easy, to? then yes. <laughs> I actually don't think that's possible. It could probably redirect to my Instagram, maybe. Dude, why have we not done that? Let's do it. Yeah, what's Boom. what's wrong with us? We can, yeah. I can do that right now. Y'all just needed recording. me to be back here to help. This is why we need you yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Focus on This, the most productive podcast on the internet so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Marissa Hyatt here with Ken Freire. Hey. hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's good to be back. Yes, it's good to have you back. Yeah. We all didn't know what to do without you here. We were just like, what? what's the next marketing initiative? How do we make sales? Well, y'all actually How did do great record? without me. No, y'all <laughs> did great without me and I had a great time. So I'm excited to share more about that later. Yes. But... We have some serious questions to talk about today. I know. It's, it, I thought it was going to be a little lighthearted, but we were just like the most important questions you could ask yourself in order to change your life. But it is. I mean, I do think that um, I've heard people say the quality of your life is directly related to the quality of questions that you're asking yourself. I don't know who said that. Maybe I just said that. We'll quote Marissa on that. I'll but I do <laughs> think it's really important to ask the right questions yep. because if you're asking the wrong questions, like who cares? What am I doing here? Why does any of it matter? You yep. know, if you're just saying like, why is life always difficult or any of that, your your brain is going to go to work answering the questions that you ask it. Yep. So it's important to ask the right questions. And specifically today, we're going to give you seven really, really important questions to ask that's actually going to help you change your life. So depending, no matter where you are today, no matter what your life looks like, you have agency to go change your life and to make it anything that you want it. Like the world is your oyster. You get to decide. And I love this. This is one of my favorite things ever. So let's, let's, just, jump let's in. just jump in. Question number one is, do you know your personal values? Wow. Yeah. This one's interesting because most people never explicitly talk about their values. Yeah. And they don't probably even know what their values are. They're just kind of walk through the day, day and day and just say, oh, I think I want to do this. I think I want to do that. They're not sure. Right. The rubber meets the road when they have a hard decision and it's a competing value. Oh, yeah. That's when I have found most people don't know truly what their values are. Yeah. I think that it, you're right in that sometimes we have an indication of what those might be. Like, oh, maybe we prioritize family or our health or something. But we, if we haven't done the work to explicitly spell out, like, this is what my values are. These are essentially the compass by which I decide the direction that I'm taking in my life then it's going to be really difficult for you to go change your life and, yeah. and to make effective change that's meaningful to you if it's not in alignment with your values. Yeah. This is also why sometimes people have difficulty with their planner. Like, what should I do quarterly, weekly, and daily? Because there's just competing values. Like, yeah. Because ultimately, your values help you make decisions. Yes. To say yes to the things you really want and what you feel called to and no to things that are outside those values. But when you don't have that and you're not sure what they are, what happens? You're just yeah. like, oh, maybe I should do this. Or you're doing it because you want to please other people, but not really for yourself. Yeah. So that's something that you should consider of like, do you know your personal values? The more you get to know them, the better you'll be able to make decisions. And you can kind of start looking around your life and, and asking yourself, like, what's important? You know, what usually helps me um, make a decision that feels in alignment with myself, yeah. you know, and there's probably indicators there. It might take some reflection and, you know, journaling, digging deep, asking the people around you, you know, they might have clues into what your personal values are if you're struggling with this. But yeah, 
Do you know your personal values? All right. Question number two, have you identified your personal mission? This is a big one. And this is honestly kind of daunting. Yeah. <laughs> like essentially, why are you here? Yeah. Is what we're asking when we say your personal mission. Like, and what, in a positive way. Like, in a positive why are you sense. Here? Not like, oh gosh, why are you here? Like, yeah. But like, why are you here? What What is your unique contribution to the world? Yeah. How can you impact those around you and impact the world to make it a better place? Like, what is your unique footprint? that you bring to the table that um, improves the people's lives around you and also yours. Yeah. And again, when you know your personal mission and when you know your values, it helps you clearly know what goals you should achieve. Yeah. Right. Most of the time, I think people fail at their goals because when they start doing them, they're like, this isn't in alignment with what I really want. Right. But they've never stopped to actually answer, what do I really want? Yeah. So this brings us to the next question. Yes. Which is where are you heading right now? Hmm. Essentially what we're talking about is taking inventory of your life today. And like, if you were to change nothing else, nothing like you didn't decide to go uh, after a different career or you didn't decide to change any of your daily habits or you didn't decide to invest any more money or make any more money than you're currently making. What is your current trajectory based on your current circumstances? Yeah. I like to think about it as like, are you content where you're at or do things need to change? Yeah. And if it's not, what are you going to do about it? It is kind of like yeah. sobering to look at your life as it is today. Like wherever you are, maybe you're driving in your car, maybe you're listening to this as you get ready in the morning or while you're cleaning your house or on a walk. Like think about your life. Think about your relationships, your career, your financial state, your spiritual state, the relationships that you have in your life where you live, all those things. And like, if nothing changed, what would your life look like in 10 years? Yeah. That's hard to, for some people to think about because there's going to be a lot of emotions that come yeah. up. Either you're going to be really excited and proud of yourself, right? Yeah. You're like, man, like for example, health, you're like working out every day, you're, you're yeah. exercising and you're like, this is awesome. I'm getting 10 years out. If I keep doing this, I'm going to be ripped. Right? Yeah. Uh, but there might be other parts of your life that you're just going to be like, man, I've sacrificed so much and for what? Yeah. You know, like for some, we talk about this a lot where people are trying to achieve career success, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but sacrifice their families. Yep. And 10 years from now, they might have that awesome title, the awesome paycheck, but they don't have anyone around them to celebrate with. Yeah, it's so true. And that's where like, is that really what you want? No. Yeah. So that's where we have to stop and think about it. Like whatever we're doing right now, is that really how we want to do it or do yeah. we need to start shifting things around? Well, and we have a great tool to help you assess where you are and help answer this specific question. And yeah. you may have done this before, but I want to encourage you, if you haven't, go ahead and do this, which is our life score assessment. And this is an assessment that will take you anywhere between five to ten minutes. And what it does is it helps you take inventory of where your life is as it relates to the nine life domains. So that's things like money, work, family, hobbies, health, um, your mind, your spirit, all different you know aspects of your life. And it really helps you understand where you are. I really try to encourage people when they take this, like don't have judgment. You're just trying to figure out your starting point. Yeah. And we know that if we're, you know, going to take a trip or something, we have to put in our starting point into our GPS system to figure out what our route is to get to the destination that we want. So all you're trying to do right now is figure out what's my starting point. There's no judgment on it. Yeah. Like you get to change your life. You get to change all these things based on what you do from here on out. We just need to figure out where you are today. So the life score is a great tool to help you do that. So you can go to fullfocus.co co slash life score to take this. It's a free assessment that we've created and it's super helpful just to know where am I? Yeah. And I'd encourage you to take it every quarter, right? Yeah. So it's not something you do once a year, every quarter, just to reassess because whatever life domain that you're working on, you want to see, did I improve? Did I not improve? Right. Yeah. What other things you need to work on? Yes. So, awesome. Right. Question number four then is, can you envision a better future? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, know. this is really exciting because obviously we just figured out, okay, where are we now? Yeah. And you might have looked at what your current trajectory is and you might not be too happy with where that things are heading. But 
can you envision a better future? And if yeah, if the answer is yes, okay, I can envision a better future, deeper relationships, better health, um, you know, more stability in my finances, more deep meaning in my spiritual life, then um, really play that out and start to think through what does this actually look like? Like what does that future that you want so badly look like? Yeah. The more clear you could get on what you want, the faster your goals are going to come to you yeah. of what you need to accomplish. Yeah. What happens is people are like, oh, I, I really want this, like, but it's all ethereal, right? Like, I'm like, oh, I want a better career. Well, what kind of career do you want? Yeah. Right. Uh, I want better boundaries. Well, what kind of boundaries do you want? Right. I want a better relationship with my spouse. Well, what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah. Right. You need to put definition to it. Yes. Well, in detail, I would say detail, because I think that the more specific you can be, the clearer and um, the more sense of clarity you're going to have when you're going after these goals, when you're deciding, how do I actually make this life happen? Well, if you know exactly what that looks like, where you're trying to go, what kind of marriage you want, like detail it out specifically. How does that make you feel? What kind of you know uh, state of health do you want to be in? Yeah. Detail that out because your definition of what a healthy life is is probably really different than mine and yours, Ken. Like yeah. we probably both have really different ideas um, of what that looks like, and so it's important to get crystal clear. Get out your journal, write this, you know, take these questions and answer them as in, in as much detail as you possibly can. Yeah, you know, the other day I was. Uh, shooting a video for the people who went through the life focus retreat. Yeah. And part of the video, I was just walking through some of my domain descriptions mm. and the a domain description is this, what we're talking about right now. Like what exactly do I want 10 years from now? Yeah. And I looked at my family one and I looked at all the details that I had written there. Cause I hadn't looked at it in a couple of weeks and I was like, yes, this is exactly what I want. Yeah. I was like, I was so impressed with myself that I yeah. wrote it this way. Cause I was like, Yeah. And it, it like just got me thinking about all the steps that my wife and I are currently taking to actually execute on these things. Right. And I'm like, I'm proud of ourselves. Like yeah. we're doing it. Is it a hundred percent perfect? No. No. But we're doing it. Yeah. You know, like we're making progress to these this thing that I put down that if I didn't, I wouldn't know if we were achieving it. And me reviewing it was huge. Yeah. J- well, I, I really think having that sense of clarity, that's yeah that sense of specificity in what you're talking about is so important. So we we figured out where we are, what's our starting point yeah. on our GPS. This is essentially the destination. Yeah. Like where do you want your life to go? Where do you want to end up? What do you want it to look like? And my recommendation is pick a mile marker of how far out you want to envision. So for us in our process, Ken, you're talking about life focus, we pick 10 years. Yeah. So the next decade of your life and, you know, where are you going to be 10 years from today? How old are you going to be? How old are your kids? You know, how old are your grandkids? And really envision that moment and what you want. And I think a great place to do this is by taking those nine life domains that you just figured out through taking the life score assessment and then envisioning a better future for each of those. And then once you actually envision a better future, you got to ask the next question, which is, are you connected to your deepest motivations? Mm. So this is the why. Like, why do you want that future? Right. And it's both intellectual and emotional. Right. And this is really important because if you just do it intellectual, like for example, if uh, 10 years from now, I'm saying to myself, oh my gosh, I want to work out because I know it's supposed to be healthy for my body. I'll avoid getting a heart attack. That's great. But I need the emotional tug too, where it's like, I want to be able to play with my kids. Yeah. Or I like to think about this. My son will be 15 at the time. And I'm like, he's going to try to beat me up. There is no way I'm letting him take me yeah. down. Right. Yeah. He, there's no way he's going to out wrestle me. Like right. it's not happening. So I better be in shape now. Yeah. But it's like that emotional competitive, like father or something that totally. I have that like, oh, I need to stay healthy now so that I can be there for him when he gets older and yeah. for my other kids. Well, and your motivations can either be positive. Like yeah. what, what does that, um, achieving that make possible for your life? So for you, you know, in this example of your son, it enables you to, you know, rough around with him and have fun yeah. and keep up with him when he's 15. But there is also potentially things that are at stake if you don't accomplish yeah. this. So I, I like to look at your motivations from two sides. It's like, what does it make possible? And what's at stake if you don't get that mm. thing, that that future that you're envisioning, if you don't achieve that, what's at stake? You know, maybe it's that if you don't stay healthy, you can't be able to keep up with him. You know, maybe you're not as close to him because you're sitting on the couch with your candy or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> Why are you going to cut me out about yeah. my streets? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, 
maybe you've gained a considerable amount of weight and so you're not able don't to put keep that on up. Me. Don't even <laughs> but that's what's at stake yeah, yeah, sure. if you don't go do the thing that you actually want. Yeah. And so sometimes getting in touch with the pain of not doing the thing can be more uh, motivational 100%. than if you are connected to what it makes possible. Yeah. Most people are motivated by pain more yeah. than pleasure, right? right? And I, you know, I'm over here joking around, like, don't bring this stuff up. Yeah. But in reality, what ends up happening is most people don't like to sit and think about what it is going to cost them. Right. So I would encourage you if you're like, kind of like me, as I was joking around, like deflecting these things, you're like, no, no, I don't want to go there. Like, no, no, sometimes you have to go sometimes there. Sometimes you need to. Yeah. So it motivates you to change. Exactly. Which leads us to our sixth question is what are your key milestones? Yeah. So we looked at your trajectory of where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. Then you envisioned a better future of where you want to go, yep. then then we envisioned why you want it. Now you got to actually talk about like how you're going to get there. Yeah. Which is and, kind of a hard part. Yeah. Some people don't like, like some people really love staying in the visionary part. That's and me. <laughs> have a hard time like crafting it. I love it. envisioning it. But then I'm like, oh, I have to actually figure out how to do this. Yeah. Okay, no. And I'm the other way around. I'm like, ooh, how to do it. Like yeah. now we're talking, right? Uh, in this part of how to do it, the way that we like to think about it is if you're thinking 10 years out, yeah. Right. That's a, the process that we have is 10 years out. The key milestones you want to have is a one, three, five. Yep. Right. And each one of those are like achievement goals. Like yep. I'm trying to get to this 10 year vision. I'm going to have a goal for one years, three year, five years. Yep. So you're breaking it down into smaller chunks. And we talk about this all the time. Yeah. I mean, if you're a full focus planner user, you're, you're very familiar with this idea of taking a big goal and then chunking it down into smaller yeah. bite-sized pieces. Uh, it's what we do every single week in our weekly preview, every single day when we set our daily big three. We're just taking that big goal and chunking it down. And so this is essentially the same thing. It's just those milestones are typically farther out. And so for you, you know, your milestones might be for the next year. How do you want, you know, if you have a grand vision for five years from now or 10 years from now, what do you want to accomplish this year to help you get to that end goal that you're trying to get to? Yeah. And one encouragement as you're creating key milestones, you don't want to make them into a smarter goal yet. Yeah. Right. Some people, if you're like in our <laughs> ecosystem, you're like, okay, I got to create a smarter goal. It's like, no, no, no. This is just a milestone. Like, I'm going to have this yeah. or I'm going to do this. So maybe like for you, you know, with this idea of being fit and, you know, able to keep up with your son, maybe a milestone for you, you know, is installing, I, I think you already have yeah. this, but like installing a daily activity of, or daily um, habit of being active. Yeah. And so exercising on a daily basis. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So and that could be a milestone. For sure. And then maybe five years from now, I might be like, oh, you know what? I really want to do a Ironman. Yeah. Not going to happen yeah. right now. Or <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. I'm just yeah. using that as an example. Right. But that might be an, an yep. example of something I'm going to really push myself because I need to take down my son. <laughs> well, an Ironman would certainly get you there. So let me just recap the first six questions and then we'll move on to the last question, which is, okay, so first we asked, do you know your personal values yeah. and essentially what are those? Uh, what is your personal mission? Yeah. Where are you heading right now? What is the better future that you want? Are you connected to your deepest motivations and, and why is this important to you? And then what are your key milestones? And lastly, what are the habits that will serve your vision? Mm. And I love this one because it's so often we think, oh, yeah, you know, I just need to go achieve X, Y, and Z in order to get to the end result that I want. But the truth is there's likely some habits that you need to install, like I was saying, like a daily habit of movement or something that's going to help you get to that state of health that you're desiring. And maybe it's spiritually, you know, that you are wanting a deeper connection to your to God, to your higher power, wherever you resonate with that. And so maybe that's installing a daily habit of prayer or of meditation or, um, you know, reading, you know, spiritual books in mm -hmm. order to get to that end result that you're looking at. So asking yourself, what are the habits that will serve your vision? Yeah. Habits are the things that are going to help you accomplish your goals. Yes. Right. And I love that concept because many times when I think about my big goals, right? I'm like, okay, well, what do I need to do right now? Like, and I'm just trying to pretty much bulldoze my way to the goal Yeah. or here. It's just like, no, no, no. What are the routines and steps that you can take right now that 
you could just easily get there. Yes. Uh, so I love that question. So if you think about this in a grand scheme of things, there's a lot. Yeah. A lot to talk about and a lot to think about. And I love when we narrow it down to the habits and the milestones because it's like now I know, okay, here's what I can do about it. Right. And this is where the Full Focus Planner actually is super helpful because yeah. there's habit trackers, there's streak trackers there that you can use for the habits that you want to instill. Totally. Um, and also figure out your quarterly goals and what are those and start writing them down there. Yeah. It's a perfect tool to make this happen. Absolutely. Well, if you're curious um, how you can take these questions and actually implement them, and really, if you need some assistance of answering these and getting started of how, how do I even go about figuring out what my personal mission is? I don't know about you, but that yeah. is very daunting to me to just try to figure out on my own. We have our brand new product, Life Focus, which I think is honestly the most important product that we have ever created as a company. Because we're not only helping you in your day to day life accomplish, you know, the life that you want to live, but we're really helping you envision that better future. We're helping you figure out what is your purpose and getting clarity on that, and then going out and giving you the tools to help you accomplish that life and that purpose that you figured out. So uh, if you're curious, go to fullfocus.co co slash life focus to learn more. And it is seriously the best process ever. Yeah. I went through it for the first time in, uh, I'd never done any kind of life planning or thinking in this way. And we went through it, uh, this last year, we took almost 700 people through it, the life focus retreat, uh, earlier this year. And it's just incredibly powerful. People are raving about it. If you're curious, go to the full focus planner community, search life focus. You can see what people are saying about it. And it's, it's pretty powerful. Yeah. I loved it. I'm, I've said this numerous times already that I'm jealous that yeah. we didn't have this 15 years ago when Me I too. started doing life planning. Me too. Marissa. Yeah. Thank you for coming back. Yes. <laughs> we thought we had lost you <laughs> to Europe. Yeah. But you're back. It's a close call. Okay? It was a close it was call. You're like, <sighs> and you even posted some stuff that were like, uh, is she coming back? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm definitely back and was always planning to come back. But it was amazing. It was seriously like the best. One of, honestly, one of my best trips I think I've ever taken. What made it so amazing? Well, can well, we review what the trip was? Yeah, I was going to say. So no, no, no. I, we got to keep it on the DL. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to Europe for two weeks, totally unplugged from work. This is like the longest I've taken off in, I think, two and a half years. So it's it's been a while since I've taken off that amount of time. And I went to Budapest for five days um, and then to Paris for nine days. So it was amazing. I was with friends uh, in Budapest and then with my sister, Mary, in Paris. Um, and I feel like it was, first of all, just like restorative on an emotional level. I mean, I think that traveling, I, okay, for those of you who know me, I'm an Enneagram 8 with a very strong seven week. Like I, traveling is just like in my blood it is part of who I, I think I was created to be. Like I am supposed to to travel as a person. And I feel so passionate every time I do that we need to go travel because it gives us so much perspective. Like I think that's why y'all were probably like, what is she talking about on her Instagram? Like, is she coming back or what's going on? Because I was able to like remove myself and see the world through a different oh, lens yeah. than what I see it on a daily basis. So it was amazing. I mean, I ate more baguettes than I think was probably legal, but uh, it was like no joke baguette for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hmm. Mm. It was constant. <laughs> Remember, Nick, I think in another episode, yes. Marissa says something like, she's like, I don't eat bread a lot. Okay. Well, yeah. Like in France, she's now you on the run eat. from Interpol for the amount of bread she ate. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Um, I was in absolute heaven. I actually came back so inspired by the baguettes that I tried to make them. It was kind of a fail. Like they were okay, but it was not great. Yeah. So I ordered like, I don't know, $150 worth of baking equipment Ooh. so that I can start baking you get? baguettes. I got like a, um, like a, almost like a pizza stone, but it's like a baking stone for my oven. You have to have these, um, like a pan with basically lava rocks, so that you can pour water on them and it mm. steams so the bread rises. It's cool. You have to have a specific type of I can't remember the My mouth word is for salivating. It, like basically like a kitchen bread. 
specific type of kitchen towel to put the dough in. It's a whole cool thing. It's a whole thing. Okay, so important question. Yeah. <laughs> when can we experience some of this? Yeah. Well, I'm hoping I'm actually going out of town again this weekend, and so I won't be baking. But the next weekend, I will be baking. And assuming they're successful, like you, you have to bake like six to eight baguettes at a time. So it's not like I'm only making it for myself. So there's plenty to share. So as well, soon as I get a baguettes, good batch, that's a week's worth of baguettes for you. Exactly, that's the point. But although they don't last that long, <laughs> they don't last that long. Oh, it's like maybe two days. I'm here but to I'll, serve I'll bring you. Some. I'm here to serve yes, you. I'll, I'll, I'll bring some. Yeah. <laughs> But seriously, I do think that one of the biggest takeaways for me with this trip was, okay, you know, we've talked about life planning. We, yeah. We're talking about it today, actually, on this episode and how important it is to get clarity on your mission, on your values. And it was really cool because this was my first time traveling since I've done that work mm. and to go, oh, yeah, this is like in direct alignment with my life plan. Traveling is. And this is part of something that like I feel really passionate about. It helps me fulfill my mission. I feel like one of the things that was a big takeaway was that I really need to become bilingual so that I can raise bilingual children. I really want to have bilingual children. And the only way that that's going to happen is if I move to another country, which is probably not on the table for me. I mean, who knows? But at this moment in time, I don't think so. Um, if I marry somebody who's bilingual or if I become bilingual myself, obviously there's other options, but those are the main three. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so I'm starting a Spanish club at my house where I'm going to have like basically a weekly Spanish class with other women in my community. And it's a great way for me to like dive into my community, get closer to people around me, also accomplish a goal of mine of learning Spanish and it'll be really fun. So just find all the Spanish moms in your neighborhood. I know. And just tell them to come over and start cooking. Yeah. Oh, and you'll that's pay like for my it. actual dream. There, yes. It'll be like nonstop. That's all yes. they'll talk and you just gotta learn. Yes. Immersion. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It'll be perfect. Yeah. So I I feel like traveling is the best. Go do it. Um if you can, even if it's just like an hour away. Just get out of your current world, your current reality, because the world is so big and people there's so many amazing people in the world, and I think it just puts so much into perspective. Yeah. Well, what's key here, what I heard, for those who are high achievers is yeah. go unplug. Yes. And this is the way you unplug. Yes. It was like, go out, you did this, yep. and then go find something that can restore you. Yeah. Like, I remember watching your your Instagrams, and then obviously when you came back, we talked about it, how much more on fire you were. Mm -hmm. You were lit up. Like I'm like, oh, she relaxed, right? Yeah. And then the third thing is like... Pick up a new hobby. You like you picked yeah. up a hobby, you picked up a challenge. And then the final thing is it, it just gave you perspective. Yep. You know, just that perspective of life and what you want. Yes. Um, I could see that. And it was yeah. pretty awesome. It's it's pretty amazing. And I think it's it's hard for us as high achievers oh, yeah. to do that kind of stuff. You know, it's like I could talk myself out of it a thousand times, but it's not only important for me to go, it's also important for the team to go. Like yeah. I saw our team rise in a way that like if I had been here, they wouldn't. I actually had this is kind of interesting. I had a meeting with one of our uh, business consultants yesterday, who this is a guy who speaks in our kind of marketing plan and, uh, and he's phenomenal. But one of the things that happened is we hit a major goal while I was gone. And so I was asking him like, what do you attribute our success to? And he was like, there's one specific person on my team who was responsible for hitting this goal. He crushed it. And um, so I was like, what do you think, you know, helped him accomplish this? And he listed out like seven different reasons. And one of them, he said, I think having his boss leave enabled him to step up in a way that he wouldn't if you were here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that was cool to me to go, me leaving <laughs> actually benefited him and enabled him to hit that goal. Whereas we all know how it is. Your boss is hanging over your head and they're like checking in and you're kind of like, okay, uh, you know, but if they can leave and just let you get to work, sometimes that's all you need to accomplish it. Yeah, 100%. So. You heard it from Marissa. She's a micromanager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not, but she's not. Just, it's still good to, to get for out. For sure. So. It empowered him. It's it, for the, sure. The person you're talking about. It, it enables them to yeah. rise up. I so. love it. Awesome. Give us your final thoughts. I would say for me, like the biggest takeaway, n probably the number one takeaway that I have after going on this vacation and experiencing this is sometimes we think productivity is only there to produce something. Mm. And what I got back in touch with was how productive it is to rest. 
And so for all of you who are listening, you're here for the productivity, you're here for the goal achievement, for the achievement in general. And I just want to remind you, sometimes the most productive thing that you can do is unplug and to rest and engage with the joy, the pleasure, the excitement of life. Like sometimes that is the absolute most important productive thing that you can do. If you don't do anything else today, if you go outside on a walk, you start looking around, you hear the birds chirping, you notice the flowers that are blooming, that can be the most productive thing that you did today. So go out and engage with the joy of life. Thanks for joining us on Focus on This. This is the most productive podcast on the internet. So please, please go share it with a friend or a family member or a colleague if you found this helpful. Be sure to join us in the Full Focus Planner community on Facebook so you can benefit from the creativity and encouragement of people just like you chasing big goals. We'll be here next week with another great episode on quarterly check-ins. Like last quarter, we had a few of our Full Focus Planner guests yes. come in and tell us their goals and we're going to check in on them next week. Yeah. Where are they now? How are they doing? So until then, stay stay focused. focused.